A European bank is now experiencing the same crisis that Silvergate, Signature Bank, and Silicon Valley Bank went through. But unlike the three banks I mentioned, which cater to a very specific customer base, the balance sheet of this European bank can rival even the biggest banks in the United States. That said, in this video, we're going to cover what happens to loans if banks like Chase, Bank of America, or Citigroup ever collapses. The global financial crisis back in 2008 was called the subprime mortgage crisis. It is due to the blatant disregard of lending criteria and issuing loans to subprime borrowers. This time around, Silvergate and SVB's customers are some of the most well-qualified borrowers for a loan. In fact, 90% of their customers have deposits well over the FDIC insured amount of $250,000. That is why the crisis we're experiencing right now is not another 2008, but it could be worse. But before we get into that, let's go over the European bank that is experiencing a crisis of its own. Deutsche Bank is the largest bank in Germany and the 21st largest bank in the world with assets amounting to $1.4 trillion. To put that into perspective, Silicon Valley Bank has $212 billion. Deutsche Bank is seven times the size of SVB. Deutsche Bank is so big that it makes the list of G-SIB, or Global Systemically Important Banks, and there are only 30 of them in the world. The significance of making into this list means that if any of the banks in this list fail, it could pose a threat to the international financial system. In other words, these banks are too big to fail. But a combination of violations, 79 to be exact, where the bank had to pay several millions in fines, that resulted in its shares dropping by 19%. So if you take all the previous violations and all the fines that they had to pay, plus people not trusting banks anymore because of the recent banking failure, then you have your current banking crisis. Back in the US, a $7 trillion empire is in trouble as well. Charles Schwab is an investment broker, a bank, and a trading platform with 32,000 employees. Its banking subsidiary holds $390 billion, making it the 11th largest bank in the United States. So how did Charles Schwab got into trouble? Well, it's pretty much the same story as SVB. They bought long-term bonds at rock bottom rates and they didn't anticipate the feds raising the rates to where it is today. They're holding $150 billion worth of bonds yielding 1.7%. In comparison, the current 10-year treasury is yielding 3.5%. 114 of that $150 billion won't mature after a decade. Now, Charles Schwab is a large trading brokerage. They hold indexes and ETFs such as SWTSX and SCHD. What will happen to those investors if Schwab does fall is probably similar to what will happen to a bank that is servicing a loan fails. After all, the commercial real estate space is experiencing a crisis of its own, especially the office sector, where we've seen some of the largest landlords defaulting on their loans. When a bank fails, two things will happen. First, and the preferred method, is for a healthy institution to acquire the failing bank. That new bank will now be the servicer of the loans. So you still need to keep paying your loans because the loan doesn't get wiped out. In fact, nothing changes in the terms of the loan. If there are no other banks capable of taking over the failing bank, the FDIC steps in and takes over. Since the year 2000, the FDIC has taken over 565 banks, and there are two new additions to this list all investments carry a certain amount of risk. The events in the past couple of weeks prove that even an institution carrying billions of dollars worth of assets are not immune to failing. But that doesn't mean you should sit on the sideline and do nothing at all. The two best things you can do to hedge against risk is to invest with a team that you can trust and to educate yourself on what a good passive investment looks like. And that is what I'm gonna talk about in this video right here. 